Hi learners, let's look at some statistics. In 2001, Volvo Buses India sold 20 coaches. By December 2011, 5,000 of them were running on Indian roads. This video describes how Volvo achieved this turnaround. In the nutshell, earlier, local manufacturers do not upgrade their bus technology, almost until 2004. Because there was no demand for a better product at that point of time. Given this environment, Volvo's strategy of bringing best products and creating a market for long-distance luxury travel has been successful. So now, before getting into the details of this case study of Volvo, just a humble request to you, if you like this type of content, please like this video. It would indicate to me that I should continue to make these type of videos. Moreover, don't forget to subscribe the channel in order to stay updated with upcoming and interesting case studies. Also, I have given some case study link in the description of this video. With that being said, let's jump into this video. The bus industry in India started with a focus on public transport, especially to cater the needs of a common man. There were lots of quality issues, but no one really cared about the quality. But, things began to change with liberalization, as more people began to move from the middle class to the upper middle class. They looked for better quality of travel. In the earlier days, you needed to book tickets almost few months in advance for train travel. And, air travel was very expensive, so they could not afford. But, they were willing to pay a premium price for bus transport, but unfortunately no such bus services was available at that time, except a few air-conditioned buses. Hence, Volvo was the first company to spot this opportunity. It firmly believed that, there was a market for luxury bus transport in India, for which commuters would pay a premium price. Therefore, Volvo's success lies in converting this belief into a value proposition. As its buses were very expensive, and the bus operators needed to charge high fares to their customers in order to make profit. A comfortable journey that reduces the travel time by a few hours, was the justification given by Volvo bus operators for their premium price, and people accepted it. The rest is history. The difference between regular and deluxe buses, was the reclining seats and a stylish paint job. Decades ago, the Indian bus market has been dominated by only two home players, one is Tata Motors and the other one is Ashik Leyland. These two companies made simple coaches on a design that hardly underwent any changes for decades. Their buses looks like a byproduct of trucks. As, they were built on truck chassis. Engines were only 110 to 120 horsepower, which makes heavy noise. Engines are mounted at the front of the bus, the heat from the engine would suffocate the entire bus. Air circulation was only through open windows, through which the dust and noise from the roads would enter the bus, making it an uncomfortable journey. Suspension of these buses are old-fashioned. But these buses are cheap, they are sold at just 1.2 million rupees. This was the situation, when Volvo buses entered India market. The buses of Volvo are sold at 4 million rupees, which was nearly four times that of the local buses. The Swedish company, Volvo bid for a tender at the Delhi Transport Corporation in 1998. They also were showcasing their low-entry city bus across the major cities in India. These buses attracted much interest of the bus operators across India. Akash Passi, who headed India operations at that point of time, said many people came to see their buses at the 1998 Delhi Auto Expo. Selling to state corporations was tough for Volvo. So in the year 2000, Passi changed the strategy. He imported two Volvo B7R intercity buses, and then sent them for a six-month demonstration drive. These buses cost almost five times more than a deluxe bus in India. But, the company approached private bus operators who ran intercity, deluxe, buses and also operators who could raise their tickets prices. And, Volvo persuaded them. At any given time, Volvo refused to compromise on their product specifications. Except for one, Passi points out that intercity buses are 12 meters long everywhere in the world. But in India, bus length was reduced to 11 meters. So Volvo, got the regulation changed in this perspective. To persuade the bus operators that Volvos were profitable, the sales team explained in the lifecycle cost comparison. 
Volvo buses had more seats than other Indian deluxe buses, which was a disadvantage for Volvo in the early 2000s, when states taxed operators per seat. But the biggest advantage of Volvo was that they could run for 22 hours without maintenance. Operators were concerned whether Volvo would provide maintenance centers every 25 kilometers, which was a common practice during those days. Volvo told the operators they don't need that with a Volvo. But still, they will give one for every 400 kilometers. Volvo also offered service support for the entire bus, and not just individual parts. With reduced maintenance hassles, operators could focus on serving more routes. As Volvos could run farther than other local Indian buses, routes such as Bangalore-Mumbai, which was 1,000 km distance became popular. Volvo, being faster, they could depart later than a deluxe buses, yet arrive at the same time. In 2001, within a year of demonstrating the intercity coach, Volvo sold 20 of them in India. That figure reached 1,100 in 2006, and 5,000 by December 2011. Volvo now has 76% of the luxury bus market. The market itself, according to industry estimates, is growing at around 10% per year. Volvo expanded gradually, starting with South and West India. After 2004, they had a countrywide presence. Volvo reached out, not only operators, but also other stakeholders. Volvo realized that they wouldn't have sold much if they sold merely the product, but they had to sell the concept of luxury bus travel. Eventually, state bus companies not only bought Volvos, but also built brands around them. The development of expressways such as, the Mumbai Pune helped Volvo grow faster. Volvo became a ticket brand, something no other commercial vehicle has achieved anywhere in the world, as passengers asked for Volvo tickets rather than an operator or a route. When the competition started to close in on Volvo, Volvo introduced products that would increase the number of passengers. In 2008, Volvo started manufacturing buses near Bangalore. It makes 1,100 buses a year, and hopes to raise production to 2,500 by 2013. The fact that Volvo manufactures its own buses works to its advantage. Whereas, Mercedes still depends on its body maker, Sutledge. Thank you everyone for watching this content. I hope you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, that would mean a lot to me. Also, do not forget to hit the subscribe button.